Quite often as landscape photographers, we are faced with the elements. As you can see today, the elements are pretty bad. But in this case, you know, instead of staying at home, I still grab a hold of my Nikon D850 and I head out. And the thing that I really love doing in these type of conditions is long exposure photography. In this case, what I'm gonna be doing today is long exposure black and white photography. Just gonna duck down out of the wind here. Now, this video is actually part of a collaboration playlist with other landscape photographers from around the world here on YouTube. There's new videos added to the playlist all this month, so make sure you check it out in the description box below after watching this video. There are some very talented photographers in this collab and I'm extremely honored just to be part of it. Anyway, onto the video. While I was out doing a recce the other day, I noticed this huge bridge. I'm at Brighton in Queensland, Australia. And when I was walking under this bridge, I looked across underneath the pylons and there was just this most amazing perspective shot. Looking along the pylons and the waves were coming in and crashing. And I thought, you know what, when the tide is high, that's gonna make for a really awesome long exposure shot. So I'm back here again and it's time to give it a go. Now I'm just going to apologize in advance here for any sort of wind noise you're going to be hearing on the microphone because I'm getting absolutely smashed. There is sea spray coming in off the rocks here, but I'm going to set up, I'm going to get my D850 down low here. I'm going to put a 10 stop ND on the camera, get my reading and then get my shot. I'm getting bad. <laughs> it's part of the fun, isn't it? Okay, I've called it on that one. I've decided I'm not going to try and do a long exposure under that bridge there because I was getting smashed and I'm talking really smashed because the bit under the bridge was actually acting like a funnel that it's going to literally be impossible to get a long exposure shot. But what I'm going to do is jump in my car and I'm actually going to head over onto the other side of the bridge because I think I'll have my back to the wind there. Okay, so this is a little bit better. There's a little bit more of a protection on this side because the wind was coming from this direction and because I'm coming underneath this bridge here, yeah, should be able to get a shot here. I'm still getting smashed with wind and salt spray. The shot looks great, but by the time I've literally got my camera all set up here and I've put the filters on and I've got it into position, you know, when you're doing a long exposure, the slightest bit of movement on your tripod and it just doesn't work. So I've got one more location in mind to go and get this long exposure shot. And to do that, I've got to go back over the bridge. You know, this is the thing about photography. You can try and plan a shot, but when nature's got other types of ideas, you just have to roll with the flow. You've got to just go along with what nature's got in store for you. So in this case, I'm heading back over to where I was originally. There is one more location that I've got in mind and fingers crossed, this one should work. Okay, so this is Brighton Park, and this is what's known as the Brighton Tree. It's a pretty well-known tree for photographers to come here and get sunsets and so forth. The great thing is it's an isolated tree. The tide is high. That means you can get some really nice long exposure shots. Much more calm here, and I should be able to get a nice shot looking out towards the west. I'm 
I'm actually just going to put my bag back a little bit away from the edge just in case there's any sort of rogue waves come in because I have seen some nightmare stories where photographers have lost their gear where just rogue waves have come out of nowhere and they've just seen their bags floating out to sea so learnt my lesson there I'm going to make sure that I put my bag back here away from the edge Okay, so I'm finally set up here. I've got a nice little position with the Nikon D850. On the front of the camera, I've got the Nikon 16 to 35 mil F4 VR lens, and I'm sitting at about 24 mil. Now, in terms of filters, I've dropped in my Lee Filters 10 stop ND. As well as on the front, I've put the Lee Filters 0.6 soft grad because the sky was just getting a little bit blown out in one of my test shots. By dropping that soft grad in the front, that's just going to take the edge off the sky and give me a bit more of an even type of exposure. Now the settings on the Nikon D850, I've got ISO 64 f11 and after doing my calculations with my Lee Filters app, I've got a reading of about 50 seconds. Now that's going to work out perfectly because I don't want one of those really long exposures like a two or a four minute exposure because the cloud is moving so fast. I'm going to get those beautiful nice streaks as well as the water is going to be nicely smoothed out. So in terms of framing, the top two thirds of the frame is filled with sky. My bottom third is just the tree. And this is going to make for a really nice, minimalist, long exposure black and white shot. Well, after that little bit of a false start with the bridge shot not turning out quite the way I wanted, I was pretty happy with that shot. And I guess that's the thing with photography. You just got to keep on rolling with the punches in what nature gives you. So guys, remember, go down and check out the playlist in the description below. And I'm going to leave it here from the Brighton tree in Queensland, Australia. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.